Hey, Jeff here at Deep Cycle Battery San Diego. So we're gonna do a Sprinter replacement battery. And if you're looking for the uh, chassis battery for the Sprinter, you're gonna find it located in the driver's side floor. So you can see we have it all but unbuttoned with the three Torx uh, screws taken off. The rubber floor mat comes out. And then you're gonna use an M10 socket is what I use to get the uh, hardware that keeps this uh, protection plate in place. And then what you're gonna wanna do is then find the battery and this one here is a group 49 AGM battery and I the reason why we're switching this battery out is because the dash displayed a low voltage uh, battery check light so before we spend all that money on that battery we're gonna check the voltage and see if it truly is a uh, uh, bad battery got a voltmeter on the battery you can see we're at 12.17 that is very low uh, we, I would expect to see this battery more at the 12.7. Doesn't sound like a lot of difference in voltage, uh, but it is actually a lot of difference in voltage. <clears throat> so we're gonna replace this battery. And uh, bef before I got started, I wish you should know that we plugged into the OBD2 port a battery saver, which looks like this. And that just backs up the memory in the Mercedes. And Let's get this guy out. So looking at the battery, you can see you've got a restraining handle. This actually is keeping the battery uh, locked down at the base. There'll be a couple bolts, we'll go after that. Get that out of the way. And then I'm gonna take the uh, negative off first, then the positive, and we'll replace it. The positive will go on first, and the negative will go back on last to do that. I'm also thinking about putting a Bluetooth voltage reader by Victron on this battery so I can open up an app on my phone and that way when I'm driving I can see that the alternator is charging the battery and I can just keep a track of where the voltage is. So notice how this cable is preventing me from getting after this hold down bracket so what I decided to do is take this negative cable off first and I'm going to do that. Take the cap, the protective caps off the replacement battery and keep those because you're going to use those to put on the terminal so that if I don't want an intermittent spark on the cable. So I have this negative cable loose, take the cap from the new battery and just drop it over like that. So now it's protecting it. And then you're gonna see that you have this vent tube, which you would use if you had a flooded lead acid battery. I'm gonna use a sealed AGM battery. So I'm not even gonna be needing this, this uh, piece of plastic here that's you know supposed to detour acid if you had it over uh, whatever overcharging situation you're gonna find out getting this out is not the hard part getting this back in there and getting these threads started probably be the hardest part of this whole job if you have any kind of this corrosion on here like this has rust I would take a wire wheel dress those out and then I'm gonna put a little bit of dielectric grease any kind of grease, I should say, just to give it some lubrication. Not a lot, just a film, a fingertip, because you want the threads to glide in. The last thing you wanna do is send these things in there and cross screw these. I've done it and it does suck. So you see I got the red protective cap on there now. So now I can work on getting this released so I can get after and get the battery pulled out. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna yank it out. Hopefully your battery has handles. Took the uh, protective caps, put them back on as I put this in there and I do have handles. Negative is gonna go towards the motor, positive is gonna go towards the uh, aft and I'm probably gonna put a little bit of dielectric or I call it no ox on these terminals because it just makes everything connect a little bit better. Just a small film. See how I've got some debris in these thread? These are gonna be some threaded holes where the uh, hold down's gonna go. I'm gonna vacuum this out and make sure I don't get any dirt trapped in there. So it'll make your job easier replacing the this piece. Got those hold down bolts brushed off. I'm gonna put some no ox on there. These are gonna get rust over time because they are exposed to the under part of the uh, 
chassis and they are exposed to the elements. So it's good preventive to keep them uh, greased. So you can see the battery's in, got the hold down bracket secured. And now it's time to put the positive on first and get that situated. Again, use a metric 10 socket for there. So like I told you, uh, we're basically done. I just gonna put the cable on, rebutton it up and fire it up. So if that's all you wanna learn, that's great. But what I wanna do is install what's called the Victron SmartSense battery meter. It just has a positive cable and a negative cable and they go on the terminals. This little device here, I can take a double back tape, stick it to the battery, open up the, download the Victron app. And with the app, and I'll show you here, is that you will get measurements of the battery's temperature and voltage. And you can name these too. If you have multiple vehicles, you can name it uh, so you know what vehicle this is installed in. It's really Noticing small. That the nut does not come off the bolt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nip the negative part of the hoop here and nip it and that be able to get it behind the bolt and then capture it again.